Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's Your Head in the Cloud. I'm joined today by the lovely Geraldine. She's another photographer from Berlin. Hello. Do you want to introduce yourself real quick? Hi. Yeah, so my name is Geraldine, and I am a photographer based in Berlin. And um, basically, I do a lot of uh, music photography, and also uh, I'm focused now on fashion photography. Yes. yes. Um, The music photography is actually how we met because we yes. met, I think, I'm not sure if it was a year or two years ago, but when partying was still a thing at a party of another musician that we both work with. Yes, I exactly. Think it was two years ago when we yes. met on a party. And I know you were um, asking me like, oh, you must be Geraldine because I know some of your stuff. So I was yes. like, uh, like surprised that you know my work already. Yes, um, she takes amazing concert photography. So if you want to... But check out her Instagram. Yeah. There's some really good stuff there. So today is actually our first book club session. That is something I really wanted to do for a long time. So we're gonna hopefully have one every month. We're gonna talk about one book about creativity, working as an artist. So if you want to have a specific book that we talk about, please put it in the chat. We're on Behance. So if you're on YouTube, go over to Behance. There's a chat. You can book, put in your book recommendations. You can put any sort of questions you have. And I'm absolutely going to check them out because I love books on creativity and, and creative art. So yes, the book we're going to talk about today is called steal like an artist yeah I and it's a book I picked and I made Geraldine read it <laughs> actually for this stream <laughs> she has it as an ebook we're gonna put the link to where you can get the ebook in the chat so you can get that otherwise you can also get it on Amazon if you want to if you want to buy it after this one mm -hmm. so what what was your first impression what did you think about the book Well, I mean, I was reading it in two days, so it's very easy to read. And I really like the illustrations the author has made in this book. Yeah. And, um, basically, I can just tell that I love reading books um, that have these kind of, you know, space to breathe after you read a very deep content. And yes, also the very voting... Um, motivational quotes sorry it's german yes <laughs> and uh yes they were very um it's inspiring me and i also think this. that um after reading this i kind of have the feeling that it gave me the confidence to understand better this. my role as a photographer yeah i really like that it is a book that kind of demystifies this. what it is to work as an artist it's It's really like raw and clear and it's not painting this fairy tale of you're just going to start creating and you're going to be successful. It's really honest when it comes to it's hard work to be an artist and make money doing that and still motivating enough so you don't feel discouraged. It's still like inspiring. So it makes at least me when I first read it, I felt like oh my God, I really want to tackle this. I really want to go out there and start creating and, and face these challenges. So that is something I feel like, especially if people start out, it's a really great book to, to go over. And we actually have a little video clip that the author made just as a little bit of an introduction. It's just one minute long and we're just gonna show that to you right now.
So the book has, so the title is Steal Like an Artist, but it also says 10 things nobody told you about being creative. And here are the 10 things that he mentions in the book. They're the actual, the chapters that he has. And we thought we're just going to pick out some of them because it's really hard to obviously talk about this whole book in just half an hour. So we just kind of like pick out a few things that we thought are really interesting and worth talking about. And so what was your favorite chapter or aspect in the book that you think it's well, worth sharing with everyone? Directly um, was impressed by the chapter one. So still like an artist, because um, I felt like, okay, um, there's a lot of things that uh, I can relate to. And also there is a quote um, by André Guidé, um, which you can read there. And it says, everything that needs to be said has already been said, but since no one was listening, everything must be said again. Yeah. So um, I also have that marked in my book because I thought it was really amazing, like a good, good quote. Yeah. And I think it's true that every work builds already on another work before. And also like there is nothing original or new. And um, I think for people who are starting with photography, they need to um, try out. So, I mean, when I was also starting this, I thought like, okay, um, perhaps I should copy other people. So to know how they work um, in photography and like to experiment a lot with different styles, not just only on one person. But um, I think it gave me more this confident afterwards to, um, yeah, to create my own style. And um, it just takes time, but um, very inspiring. And also like uh, you can just repeat uh, styles. So yeah. there's nothing new actually. <laughs> Yeah, I also think it's really interesting because I also when I started, I looked at other photographers work and I was like, this looks so amazing and I want to create work like they do. So it's really important just to take that all in and take whatever is good for your work from other people's work to create your own thing. Once yeah. you have collected enough to then find your own style, basically. Yeah, exactly. But for you, when, like, how long you think did it take for you? Like, when you gathered a lot of other stuff from other artists, mm. how long did it take you when you felt like, maybe I'm getting a bit closer to having my own style? Um, I guess it's, um, you cannot point it on uh, a year. It's just a feeling. Like, if you feel like, uh, no, uh, this is actually, I'm done with this style, so... I should um, keep going on with my own stuff. And I mean, um, you also collect ideas over the years, like how you want to put something um, into action and everything um, comes naturally, actually. And so um, I feel like it took many years, actually, to come to this uh, part of saying, hey, um, I want to show my own work and I absolutely love what I do <laughs> and I'm not ashamed of it. So, yeah. Oh, it took me. Oh, I, I still feel like I keep on learning. I see other people's work. I'm like, I want to know how they did that so I can see if I can use some of what they're doing for what I'm doing. Yeah. And so still like an artist, I think it's really important for people to understand. It's totally fine to get inspired by other people, use what has been done in the past Mm -hmm. to find what you want to do which doesn't mean copying one-on-one -on -one what someone else is doing because then that's turning into a copyright issue but take what you see even if it's not just photography because for me even other arts are inspiring like graphic design paintings mm -hmm. books like everything is a source of inspiration at yeah. least for me I don't know how it is for you but um, I think exactly yeah. like almost the same but I also think like if I take a shower in the morning and I feel like oh ideas are coming into my mind uh, great and then afterwards after I shower I need to 
um, open my notebook and suddenly scribble something on it. And also if you take some long walks outside and then like the mind is like very calm and relaxed mm -hmm. and you think like, oh, uh, maybe I can start another project. Like um, if you feel good with yourself, I would say uh, you tend to like create things like you should be motivated doing new things. Yeah. And I think what's what's so cool about it when he like the first chapter, like still as like an artist, it's a lot about take from wherever you need to take from to get inspired. Mm -hmm. It's not just taking from other artists. It's taking inspiration from wherever you can find it. Just have an open mind when you walk through life and steal, like take whatever you need to, to create and work. So I think that is really good, especially when you start out in mm -hmm. the beginning to have that mindset of, everything around you can be a source of inspiration yeah. for you and i would say like it's okay in the beginning to copy i mean that's not a bad thing i mean we have to learn from other people how we can achieve those styles then in a few years and yeah yeah i would say like um it's okay if you put this under your desk like not publish it <laughs> it's a copy. yeah so Yeah. And I also think it's really interesting to study other artists in that way, like know who are the photographers or whatever art you're doing that were there before you. People that basically did what you are doing right now, it's like study what they have been doing, how they have been doing it, how they got to where they are right now. Um, and then learn and take what you can take from it. I think for yeah. me, that's also really interesting always to yeah. see how did people get to the point mm -hmm. there now. Really? So yeah. that, that is really nice. What you can use for your work. Yes. So yeah, the first chapter, I think, is a really good entry of the whole book. Mm -hmm. Another thing that for me personally was a very eye opener and something that I thought nobody had talked about before, at least not in books that I have read was uh, chapter number nine, where he says, be boring. Mm -hmm. That's the only way you get work done. Because I don't know how you feel about it, but when I started calling myself an artist, when I started calling myself a photographer and being introduced as a photographer, especially in Berlin, I felt like I had to represent a sort of image mm -hmm. of this like partying, cool bohemian artist which I think he says it really well in the book where he uh, writes the whole romantic image of the creative genius doing drugs and running around and sleeping with everyone is played out. <laughs> um, because I thought you had to be this larger than life persona and it was all about creating. And actually, as he also writes in the book, it's a lot about It's a nine to five job, it's work, it's hard work, it's learning about money, it's learning about finding your own routine, it's mm -hmm. learning about who you do business with, it's a lot of business side that comes with working as a creative, not just doing it as a hobby. And I think it's really important for people to understand that also the aspect of having a daytime job. I know a lot of creatives that have daytime jobs um, to survive, to make money, because in the beginning of your career, you might not be able to. And I think that is something that not a lot of people talk about openly. Hmm. I don't know what your experience is um, on that. Actually, I thought the same when I was starting with photography. I was just a bit insecure, like, um, how do I see myself as a photographer in this business? Like, um, do I have to sell an image? Is that mm -hmm. so important? I mean, um, I was not really sure uh, how to do this, how to start actually. And um, I feel like now better understanding that uh, you have to have a day job. So um, it's like you have to... Um, You have to uh, secure uh, yourself. You have to save money and um, to buy new equipment and everything like um, building a routine in your life. So that's so important and makes you a bit grounded as well. And 
I also think like uh, people shouldn't like just follow an ideal like what uh, the media has been um, representing. It's just like um, you have to also um, think how does it work in the reality. So yeah, there's a check. <laughs> Absolutely, because I felt like in the beginning, also having a day job had the feeling of I haven't made it yet. I'm not at the point where I can support myself with my art. So I'm not successful. I haven't reached the point, And that means I'm not good enough in what I do. And I think it's important for people to know that that is not the case. It's totally fine and valid to have a daytime job that has nothing to do maybe even with what yeah. you do creatively, just to support what you do Mm-hmm. Because it will give you the creative freedom to keep on creating and it gives you a sort of security because otherwise you might be forced to take jobs that you don't want to do yeah. that um, just because they pay you money and then you end up maybe working in a job, in a creative job that took away your creative freedom just because you had to pay the rent. So. I, I got a really good advice once from another photographer that also told me don't quit your daytime job until you found like until you made more money with your photography than with your daytime job. Mm-hmm. I think that is a really valuable lesson for people to learn. Like don't jump in head over heels. At least for me personally, that was a really, really nice to read to be reinsured that this is the right way to do it. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously there are other people that want to do it a different way, but I think it's good that this once again demystifies this whole artist is completely saying goodbye to a stable and boring life. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But it's totally fine to feel like a bit boring sometimes and think Mm -hmm. about how to save money and how to create a business. Yes. Even when you're creative. That's so important if you want to uh, make your photography a bit more professional yeah. and also um, it just shows us like uh, it's not easy to be an artist <laughs> so actually, this is Milo a lot of things, he doesn't know much you know, to do with you have to have day job to get money um, for your projects and on the other hand you have to plan your new projects to um, get creative or you know it's a lot of things coming up Yes, and I feel like what I like about the book as well is that it on the one side gives you like still like an artist an insight on how to find inspiration, like for your art itself. But it also gives you almost life advice in the sense of the be boring chapter or also the chapter before that is called be nice, which Mm -hmm. I think you can adapt to any sort of job to any sort of um profession you can have it's not just for creatives it's not just for photographers the writer uh, like the the author of this book is actually like a writer and he calls himself a writer that draws because he does his illustration himself so it is something for everyone Mm -hmm. and it's just nice to see that he's breaking it down to be nice to people just be a nice decent human being and and it's not about this whole ego show it's not about who is the most successful the quickest it's a lot about building relationships with other people too like connections yeah exactly like it's important just to uh, build up a stable network yeah um and also like being nice to other people um that's what um brings you further in your craft because i think when you are, you know, uh, assisting for someone, uh, he might can help you with another project that you're doing then. So it's like a win-win situation. So why yeah. uh, should I, you know, like be like so negative about other creative people? And like, uh, it's better to, you know, support each other. Yeah. Yeah. I also think it's it's an aspect of creative work that has not at least maybe I'm wrong, please send more recommendations my way if I'm wrong, but that's not an aspect that's talked about so much. I think there are a lot of books about just creativity, just about inspiration. And for me, I really enjoy this almost manual of do these things 
and you will be, I mean, it's not 100% secure, but you will be successful in a way. Of course, you have to define what is success. But Mm -hmm. if you go through this book, at least that's what I felt. And you think, if I do all these things, if I find inspiration, like take inspiration from where I need it, and I create as much as I can, which he also says in the book, it's a lot about finding a rhythm, finding a routine, creating as much as you can, even if a lot of it is not good, because that's what's going to happen in the beginning of your career. (laughs) At least that's what I feel like a lot of in the beginning was not good. Mm. And then also be a nice human. And in the sense, like be organized and see this as a job because it is a hard, hard job to do. Yeah. It's not just fun and uh, running around taking cute photos of things. It's actually a hard job. So I really yeah. like that aspect that you this book to, keeps it real, basically. Yeah, yeah. you have to like um, keep everything in balance, like your projects, the creativity, which needs also like, um, yeah, um, kind of um, a good uh, mindset for yourself you need to. And also like the, the fact, okay, um, the, the normal day job that you have to do. Um, yeah, I think the book is really good in it. Like um, it shows the motivational quotes. Yes. And also the hands-on experience, what is so true, like close to the reality actually. And that's a good mix actually. So yeah. um, I mean, it was very good to read this in a, um, a few days ago so I think like um, it's been written really well yeah and it's really easy to read even though it has so much content in it mm-hmm. I think it's something I read it in like one or two days yes because it only has let me check it has like 140 pages mm-hmm. and most of it is like big illustrations and you see the whole like one chapter is like one page like the the headlines of one mm-hmm. so it is really easy to read it's not something that you have to work through for a week or something yeah. which I also it's an aspect for me that I really enjoy that it's easy to digest and you can just go through it yeah one question is there something you think is missing in the book did you think there was something you wish he would have talked about too mm. I actually don't have this feeling that there is something missing because I think it's just important to collect a lot of ideas from other people who would say like uh, this is uh, that this means this is creativity and like it's just um, yeah it's just good to know something new and Mm. to build on that like you you have to have the feeling after you read this book like oh okay I want to create um I got this you know examples from the book that I can you know put into my work so it's just like a good guidance in this case and I feel like it was very okay and I mean for this tiny book it helped me a lot (laughs) so yeah he yeah. actually has more books even like I have some of them here like he wrote more he wrote still like an artist he wrote show your work which mm-hmm. is also really good and then he also wrote keep going so mm-hmm. he has a lot of different books and I think the still like an artist was the first one and also my favorite one but um yeah he has a lot more so if people read this and they feel like there's something missing maybe he also has a lot of other stuff Oh, that's great. (laughs) Yes. So we are almost done. Time flies as always. Um, I wanted to thank Geraldine for joining me today. It was really lovely talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Sophia. (laughs) Yes. And I also wanted to check if we have any recommendations in the chat. If you can still send them to me. On my Instagram, you can send me an email on my website. I really love creative books. So please, please send them my way. Also, I want to encourage you guys, everyone again, to follow Geraldine on Instagram. Her work is amazing. And just the last slide here. 
because I think it's really encouraging and a nice quote from the whole book. It's a part and like one of his drawings and it just breaks it down. I think real quick what the book is about and also what I want to send everyone off with in the day, what is needed to work as an artist, curiosity, kindness, stamina, and last but not least, the willingness to look stupid because I think that is something we all should embrace. And yeah, so I had a lot of fun. Please let me know what you think because I want to do this every month and I'm hoping that you guys enjoy it as much as I do. And next week, we're going to talk about Adobe Max, which was last week. So we're going to have the whole week. It's going to be recap week. I'm going to do one on Thursday with Juliet. We're going to talk about our personal highlights and what we liked about it. So I hope I see you guys next week. And if I'm not wrong, we have a slide as well that shows you guys what you can have a look at next week. And also there's another stream coming right after this. So stick around and I hope all of you have a wonderful Thursday and thank you so much for joining us this week.